So Sophie Hendricks will present the roles of person-specific and person-independent behavioral adaptivity in affiliation, affiliation and bonding. Sorry. So, hello. Uh, Sophie, yeah, hello. Welcome. Thank you very much for the introduction, Felix. Um, are you ready to share your screen, Sophie? Uh, yes. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can see pretty good. Thank you. Okay, cool. Please go ahead if you're ready. I am and you have 15 yes. minutes and five four questions. The Vrije Universiteit Amsterdam. And today I'm going to tell you something about the work of uh, Jan Treur and myself regarding the roles of person-specific and person-independent behavioral adaptivity in affiliation and bonding. In our previous work, we have included several central mechanisms in human interaction, and these are the sensing and sensory representation of each other, mirroring the other's actions and preparation for own actions, internal simulation through prediction links, detection of interpersonal synchrony, for different modalities such as movement, affect, and verbal interactions. And synchrony is defined as the attunement of actions from the same modality over time and the expression and execution of own actions. So we have included indeed all these mechanisms in our agent models. And these mechanisms are adaptive. And that leads to behavior adaptivity in the interaction. And specifically, we have focused on short-term affiliation and long-term bonding in the human relationships, so the relationships that agents build with each other. However, an interesting issue that's often left unaddressed in the literature, but also left unaddressed in our previous agent models, is that which of these mechanisms are specific for the other person and which are other person independent. While building a relationship with a specific person, it may be believed that the adaptation taking place I'm is not. Really sorry, Sophie, can you uh, However, increase the volume a little bit, please? Oh, device. yeah, sure. Because we can hear you pretty well when you talk, but in the video, it's a little difficult. Please, sorry. Okay, shall I go uh, back then in the presentation? Uh, just try again with the video if you want, or you can present it on, in person. Okay theories such as attachment theory. It has claimed that adaptations acquired in one relationship also have their effects in other relationships. Therefore, it makes sense to assume that at least part of the considered behavior adaptivity is other person independence. But then the question remains like, what types of learning for the behavior adaptivity can we use? In other words, which learning or adaptation principles can apply to which mechanisms, so to be translated. And indeed, both other person independent adaptation and person specific adaptation can be included herein. And also control of these types of adaptations, like the adaptive speed of adaptation, which is sometimes termed higher order adaptation, is required for these um, behavior adaptation principles. Luckily, we have useful contributions from neuroscience. Because mechanisms in general involve connections between states and also excitabilities of states. And here we can differentiate between synaptic and non-synaptic forms of plasticity. And heavy learning is then a synaptic form of plasticity and adaptive excitability thresholds, a non-synaptic form of plasticity. And we then need metaplasticity to control them. As a method for our agent models to address this research aim and also all these neuroscience mechanisms, we have relied on the network-oriented modeling approach from Jan Treur. The basic characteristics of a temporal causal network regard connectivity with connection weights, aggregation, so the impacts on a certain state are aggregated by some combination function CY, and also the timing, so the speed factor eta y for all states y. And here you can see the canonical difference equation model in which all these things, so connectivity, aggregation, and timing are included. 
A network model is adaptive if some of the network structure characteristics changed over time. Like you have connectivity adaptation through changing connection rates, aggregation adaptation through changing combination functions or changing excitability thresholds, and also timing adaptation uh, through changing speed factors. However, how can the model, the network model itself? By adding a self model to it, a subnetwork with states representing network structure characteristics. We have the different possibilities. I we can create self models for connectivity, a self model for aggregation, or a self model for timing. Like, for example, representing the network characteristics, connection rates omega xy through um, the self model state. Uh, w, X, Y, a combination function parameter, tau Y, through a self-model state, T, Y, and a speed factor, eta Y, through a self-model state, H, Y. Now, then the challenge, of course, remains like, how can we map um, a behavior to neuroscience to self-model states? So, we have short-term affiliation, that's based on non-synaptic plasticity of excitability thresholds. Therefore, we need the T states for excitability thresholds. We have long-term bonding that is formed by synaptic plasticity of connections within persons. And therefore, we use the W states for connection rates. And we have metaplasticity to control both of these types of plasticity in a context-sensitive manner. We have the H states for adaptation speed. And that's respectively the HW states for the W states, of course, and the HT states for the T states, as self model states. Here you can see it even more differentiated our different types of adaptivity that we have built in our agent model. So at the first order level, we have the W states, and they are used. Uh, for over time responding stronger to a specific person or agent over episodes. So it's other agent specific and it's also adapted over episodes of interaction. We also have the D states to become over time more sensitive for a specific person within an episode. So they change within episodes and um, they adapt them instead of over episodes, as you can see over here. Then at the second order level, we also have a couple of remaining states. These are the W states, generation characteristics, the W, W states and the T, W states. So, and they are used for over time to respond stronger to anyone. So it's other person independent. We have the T states, generation characteristics, so WT and the TT states, to become more sensitive for anyone over time. Then we also have the HW states and the HT states, as mentioned at the previous slide already shortly, and that's to adapt faster to anyone over time. And here you can see a base level of an agent A, uh, as how it is designed within our agent network model. So we have sensing and representation states for the different modalities of others, in this case for an agent B, C, and D. Then the M for movement, the B for effect, and the V for verbal actions. So sensing others, representing other states needed for that. Then we also have then the base level of a single agent. Preparation states and also execution states and synchrony detection states. And the interpersonal synchrony detection happens by comparing the sensing states of the actions of another agent by the execution states of the agent itself over time. Then we go to the aggregation states at the second order level. 
Here you can see them displayed. So we have aggregated sensing, execution, and synchrony states, and also aggregated W states. And they are used uh, for the speed adaptation, as you can see over here, that all these are indeed used over here. And then we, and you will see over here, again, for the same single agent, um, the first order level, so the W and the T states, as mentioned before. Then we have the long-term adaptive mirroring, so the W states for the connections from the representation to the preparation states. We have also long-term adaptive representation states. These are the W sensing representation states. We have long-term adaptive execution states. We have the short-term adaptive representation states. So these are the T states with excitability thresholds for the representation states of agent A, and also short-term adaptive execution T-states. Then we have created an experimental setup to evaluate the behavior of um, our agent models. Then hereby we have used a number of expert scenarios in a group of four agents, so an agent A as I've shown you, and then we have also agents B, C, and D. They have actually the same states but they can have different uh, state values. Then each agent randomly has an episodes of interaction with one of the three other agents. Then indeed have random selection of two agents for interaction episodes, random selection of the length of interaction episodes, and as well random selection of the length of a break between consecutive interaction episodes. And due to these episodes, they display both short-term and long-term behavioral adaptivity. And then other person-specific and other person-independent adaptivity over time. You will here see an overview of an example experimental setup. Here you can see our four agents A, B, C, D. Then one, two, three, four, five, and it can continue after the five, of course are the episodes in which they can interact with each other, the randomly selected agents, so in the first episodes as agents B and D. Um, the episodes of interaction differ in their time lengths, and also the breaks between them differ in their lengths, as you can see over here. Then the experiments we are still conducting at the moment, uh, so that's work um, that is in progress, and you will read in our paper. Then after this conference, but yeah, now I hope that I have given you a nice overview of our agent models. So as discussed before, we have a variety of mechanisms play that play a role in the behavioral adaptivity emerging in human interaction. Our research aim was which of these mechanisms are specific for the other person and which are other person independent. And therefore, we have designed a second-order multi-adaptive agent model, including person-specific and person-independent plasticity. Um, the metaplasticity was used to control these types of plasticity. Um, our agent model can serve as a basis to develop adaptive virtual agents that are able to affiliate and bond in a human-like manner. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. A więc postanowiłeś zacząć uczyć się polskiego, a powiedział. Uh, so, are there any questions? Uh? Yes, please, if anyone has any questions, raise your hands, either in person or through the online app. <laughs> In the meanwhile, thank you so much for your presentation, Sophie. Very interesting. Hey, you're welcome. Seems like, sorry, it seems like we have a question here. <laughs> no, sorry, it doesn't seem like.
Well, in the meantime, I have a question if nobody in the audience does. So, um, what kind of interaction did, did the agents have? Like, did you force them to have, uh, I don't know, uncomfortable situations or positive situations or? Yeah, so what we can actually do with the agent models is so we have like states for them and it's rather abstract at the moment with movement state for each agent or verbal action state or affective state but we can then design scenarios around them so for example the movement can be seen as that they for example shake hands whether or not they do that or that uh, one agent moves quickly and at a high activation level so it's a very a movable agent while the other one is not. Um, with the synchrony states, we then try to see whether or not they are actually at the same level of movement or that the difference are yeah, rather small between them or not. So if they are go with each other. So it's actually not that the specific movement is really displayed, but these are states that can be used then for movements that can be designed then in the situation that you want to use them. So it's actually a rather general model. And that also, I think, is a strength of the model because you can then apply it to a variety of uh, situations. So we often use it for therapy sessions, uh, for scenarios used by that, but can also be used in different ones. I don't know, does that answer your question of or? Sorry, yeah, thank you very much, Sophie. If no one else has a question in the audience, we can, we have two minutes and a half. I think we can close this block. Thank you very much for both presenters who were here, Sophie and Lynn. And thank you to everyone in the audience for being here. We will resume at 12 o'clock uh, Guadalajara time. And thank you so much again for being here. Thank you.